Hello everyone, we are very honored to have here Professor uh, Gilel Messas. Professor Messas is a psychiatrist and professor at the Faculty of Medical Science of Santa Casa de San Paulo in Brazil and member of the Value-Based Center at St. Catherine College of, of the Oxford University. He is the author of many books and scientific articles on phenomenological psychopathology and substance abuse. Professor, thank you for accepting our invite. <laughs> I have some questions for you about your research topics. Uh, Professor Messers, you are highly dedicated to promoting the phenomenological approach for which we are deeply appreciated. Uh, your work, particularly in phenomenological psychopathology, stands out for its extensive research and teaching. Your approach, known as dialectic proportional phenomenological psychopathology, is deeply rooted in the tradition of the phenomenological psychopathology. Could you tell us about it and what are the clinical potentials and applications? Yes. First of all, I'd like to thank you for the kind invitation and the opportunity to talk with you and to know you in person, a lot of much. you. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much and congratulations for your work Thank and you. spread in the phenomenological tradition throughout the world. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Well, as you mentioned, the, my work is uh, really rooted in the phenomenological tradition. And as you mentioned, I call it uh, a dialectical proportional perspective of phenomenology and of phenomenological psychopathology. That means uh, that, or should I say, uh, to explain this idea, we should remember that to any interpretation of human being, of human existence, there's a correspondent interpretation of psychopathology. In other words, psychopathology fully depends on the interpretation we give for human existence. Uh, I understand human existence building on phenomenological tradition as the development of the person. So human existence is existential movement. Human existence is a movie, it's not a picture. So to understand that, we have to address human existence in its psychopathological moments. We have to consider the psychopathological experiences through uh, dynamical lenses so that we can grasp this movement. This is the idea of uh, dialectical proportional psychopathology and dialectical proportional clinical care. That means using dynamic tools to understand and to grasp the dynamics of existence and its pathological moments. moments. In other words, that means that uh, psychopathological experiences are either the impossibility of having an existential development or having hindrances to this development because of the lack of proportion or, or the disproportion of experiences. That are the two core concepts which I defend and which supports my work. It's an approach that looks at the whole existence in its in intrinsic dynamism. So, uh, it reminds to the tradition of the phenomenological psychopathology, such as Jaspers, Biswanger. Okay. Yeah. Uh, one of the applications of this method is uh, in the field of the substance abuse. Uh, we talked about this topic with Danilo Tittarelli during a meeting uh, presenting the Italian edition of your book. Yeah. In your view, what contribution can phenomenology, phenomenology offer in this complex field? In Italy, we have to mention the significant work of Gilberto Di Petta. Yes. Yeah, I, I think you were in Italy particularly uh, um, particularly uh, well accompanied by such names as, as Titarelli and Di Petta. Well, the idea is that, uh, as far as I understand, addiction and even substance misuse as a whole has been the, the less developed field and psychopathology so far. Addiction 
uh, has been understood as only a dependence for a substance, or the substance misuse has been considered uh, only as a behavior of bad using, misusing a substance. My idea, uh, along with the, these people, these researchers you mentioned, is uh, showing what are the experiential alterations related ad to addiction. That is addiction, that is uh, describing addiction not as a problematic behavior, but as a world transformation. That's the idea. So, uh, so to speak, the alteration of behavior are only a second moment of the existential alteration. And what is this existential alteration? The uh, existential alteration, the disorder, the real disorder of addiction is actually the excess of the moment, the excess of the present time in consciousness. So it, addiction is a condition in which the present is too strong regarding the, 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 the conscious uh, presence, regarding the past and the future. And all of the easy to describe behaviors of addiction are actually related to this core essential alteration. It's an approach totally different despite the mainstream uh, in, uh, in uh, research, in, uh, in the scientific research. Um, and it's most frightful. <laughs> okay. Your, your approach is most frightful. We hope so. <laughs> yeah, we've been trying to demonstrate that. Yeah. Um, the last question. Uh, today marks the closing event of the Renewing Phenomenological Psychopathology Project. Um, according to you, which path have proven most frightful following this project? This is a wonderful project. I think in the last five years or ten years, phenomenological psychopathology has experienced a new rise in, in, in the big scene of mental health. This is very interesting. And I think this project is a sort of a summarizing of this new rise and, and has been responsible for putting together people who has been for distinct, uh, by distinct generations to develop that field. So I think the most important outcome of this project so far is exactly bringing together the diversity of interpretations, of phenomenological interpretations of mental health throughout the world. So I think after this program, this launching project, I think we can have a more consistent uh, interpretation and a more consistent influence of phenomenology in renewing not only itself, not only phenomenology, but also renewing mental health as a whole, uh, global mental health as a whole. So I should say, to summarize it, that transforming uh, phenomenology in a tool for a global mental health renovation is the most important outcome of this project so far. Okay, Professor, thank you very much. We hope to, we hope to have you with us again soon and thank you again. We hope so. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you.